in this video we'll be talking about ectopic pregnancy so ectopic pregnancy simply means where pregnancy happens in a offbeat location so generally the implantation of the fertilized egg or the blastocyst happen in the uterine cavity in the uh, in the endometrial lining but in this case the implantation happens somewhere else so the most common site for awkward implantation is the fallopian tube and it's it it accounts for about 95% cases of the ectopic pregnancy and in 5% cases implantation site is other than the fallopian tube so in the fallopian tube the most common site is the ampulla 70% of the cases is basically ampullary implantation fimbrial implantation is bit rare 11% of the cases are fimbrial implantation then there is isthmic implantation which kind of accounts for 12% of the cases then interstitial implantation is very rare and in rarest of the rare occasion the implantation can happen in the cervix as well and in in some classical cases almost negligible implantation can also happens in a scar tissue outside the uterus as well but that's ultra rare question is what is the cause of this ectopic pregnancy why does implantation happens elsewhere where they are not supposed to be so let's dip, uh, dig deep in so let's talk about the normal implantation process in order to understand how things go wrong so here we are looking at the uterus here is the ovary here is the uterus here is the cervix here is the vagina here is the fallopian tube and the three locations of the fallopian tube here is the fimbria the finger like projections the ampulla and the isthmus so let's look at the process of implantation so before that you can understand that ovulation would happen from the ovary the egg would travel through the fimbria towards the ampulla in the ampulla and isthmic junction there would be fertilization after that there would be two cell stage four cell stage six cell stage and eventually the blastocyst would form blastocyst would go and travel towards the uterine cavity where the implantation would happen in the uterine wall in the endometrial lining so this is the normal process of implantation and this is abrogated in ectopic implantation so there are couple of risk factors that can really increase the risk of ectopic pregnancy one of the most prevalent one is basically history of pelvic inflammatory disease in vitro fertilization use of intrauterine devices tobacco smoking tubal surgery or sometimes previous history of the ectopic pregnancy all these can account for a round of ectopic pregnancy now in the ectopic pregnancy the blastocyst implantation happens in the awkward location right but what's the big deal about it remember when the blastocyst is implanted it lead to establishment of the blood connection now before that you have to understand that why does blastocyst cannot reach to the uterine cavity because it could be a motility problem in the fallopian tube itself there are cilia hair like projections all over the fallopian tube cells which propel the blastocyst towards the uterine cavity in many cases this function is altered or not adequate and that is how the blastocyst gets slowed down and indeed imp gets implanted into the fallopian tube instead of the uterine cavity now in normal pregnancy what happens is when the blastocyst is implanted it establishes connection with the endometrial lining and it ruptures the spiral artery to establish blood connection and ensure nutrient exchange now same thing if you think about the context of the a uh, fallopian tube lining one can understand the cytorophoblast would try to establish the connection but there are no spiral arteries because it's not the endometrial lining so obviously things that get ruptured is basically the fallopian tube epithelial cells and as a result if the fallopian tube is ruptured it would lead to huge inflammation blood loss and chance of further infection that lead to severe cramp abdominal plan pain vaginal bleeding and especially um, it would lead to many other uncomfortable situations now symptoms may progress to um, 
hypervolemic shock if the rupture and the, if there is too much of blood loss that happened so all these factors are important to consider now the diagnosis happens generally via transvaginal ultrasound so if the implantation is in ectopic site that can be monitored in the usg report also serum beta hcg level is another good biomarker uh, maybe the lower than expected uh, gestational uh, expected hcg in the gestational age is an indicative of ectopic pregnancy so most of the cases surgical interventions are required especially in the cases when the fallopian tube is ruptured laparoscopy and uh, laparotomy is one of the ways by which it can be terminated in case of uh, open uh, rupture of the fallopian tube open surgeries might be required but if it is mild and it's not rupturing the fallopian tube in this case methotrexate and folic acid uh, antagonist can actually uh block the progression of this ectopic pregnancy remember folic acid and methotrexate both are important for dividing cells in the embryo cells are mostly dividing so when these uh, drugs are provided all the dividing cells would be severely affected and embryo would not divide to give rise to, uh, the embryonic cells would not uh, divide to give rise to other germ layers so this is how ectopic pregnancy can be terminated so I hope this video was useful. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. See you in next video.